let's start recording and move on to the meeting of the Racial Disparities in the Criminal and Juvenile Justice System Advisory Panels Act 65 Working Group said three times fast. Um, we uh, let's just do some introductions. Rebecca, why don't you start? Because I know you're on the phone. Thanks, Aitan. It's Rebecca Turner from Defender General's Office. Uh, and Robin? Robin Joy, Crime Research Group. Okay, Monica? Monica Weaver, Department of Corrections. Thank you. Evan? Uh, Evan Meenan with the Vermont Department of State's Attorneys and Sheriffs. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. Karen? Karen, Karen Gannett with the Crime Research Group. Great. Ian? Uh, Ian Loris, working with Aton as a summer assistant. Uh, Dr. Crocker. Um, you're muted. Am I still muted? Sorry. No, there you are. There I am. Sorry. I'm Abby Crocker. I'm University of Vermont and National Center on Restorative Justice. Thank you. And Susanna. Hi, Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director. Great. Welcome. Um, I am a little like we need the panel, but or, you know, some larger subset, but we don't really have a rule as to what a quorum looks like with the working group. That may be something that we want to discuss. Susanna? I was go just going to mention, I, I was just going to mention, I think Weechi might be joining around 630 or something. I think he has a standing thing on Monday, so that will right. add at least one to our number. Thank you. Um, so I think we just go ahead with where we're at. Um, my, I want to just continue the conversation, obviously, which is, you know, sort of what we were doing last summer with last summer's working group, although we were calling it a subcommittee. Um, David Scher, and I think this is what Karen was referring to. Oh, David's just texted me. Technical difficulty, hopefully on soon. You got to love the modern age. Um, <laughs> In any event, I will steal some of David's thunder be, just because it was really where I wanted to start. Um, he had given us, which we had all sort of nodded our heads and gone great to, an action item, which was to look over the report that we put forth in uh, December of last year. Um, that has, in fact, gotten us to this moment. And then to look at Act 65, specifically the page 18 through 23, which are the pages that refer to the RDAP, um, and to the report that we have to do, excuse me, for November, and that we then look at answering question three, which was about the scope of the body that we are proposing. So I'm, if there are no objections, oh, hi, David. Um, if there are no objections, I would suggest picking up that conversation from that point. I'm hoping everyone had time to look over these, those uh, links and documents that I sent. Um, I would start by being very, as the chair of the panel, I, there's a certain uh, conservatism that's required of me. And I mean that in the, in the, not in the Republican, Democrat, 21st century American way, 
I mean it in the sense of conservatorship that I am to go with the bottom line on something. And if people want to go beyond that, that's fine. But that's not necessarily my position. I will explain what I mean. And that is to say, I, when I re read these, I look at the report from December of last year, and it's between the bottoms, bottom of page four and the top of page nine are the prioritized lists of data that we had at that point decided were critical. Um, although I should also point out that the non-prioritized stuff was considered important too. Um, Robin and CRG did a huge bit of work in finding out what data is exists, what data do not exist, what data would be difficult to find, and so on. Those are in that those tables. And my suggestion, following on what David's proposed action item was, would be what we start with with this body are those prioritized bits of data. I say that for a number of reasons. First of all, it's not our job to expand this into the future. That's not the job of the panel and it's not the job of the working group. Our job is simply to answer the five questions or um, topic areas that are put forth in Act 65. Um, what Curtis said last week was very provocative and I thought very, very interesting. Hi, Witchy. Um, but we're a legislative body, and the kind of partnership with the private sector that he was proposing is something that, I mean, I would defer to David and to, I guess, Evan and Rebecca and all of the people who like do law about whether that's even possible. Um, this is not a private body. And I, I mean, I know I'm certainly not in any position to go walking up to people I don't know with my hand out. I hate doing that um, and I'm not good at it and I don't know how to do it. Um, but I'm not sure that's also the job of the RDAP. We have a very local circumscribed responsibility that is on in that act. And my position that I'm going to take that we can then work off of. You, I mean, I'm not saying this as, you know, I necessarily believe what I'm saying. I'm saying that there procedurally we've been given a document from which to work a law. And that's that. I'm shutting up now. Hey, Tom, this is Rebecca. Can I respond? Sure. Hi. Hi. So I hear two points in your in, in, in your um, opening, which is, A, you propose that we follow what we uh, decided in our past report, which was identifying and going forward with the previously identified uh, questions, high priority uh, answers that we want. Um, what? Sorry. I think you went away just when you were saying something important. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm I okay. I support I second your um I second your point that we should not reinvent the wheel and move forward from where our report left off, which is specifically okay. on, on identifying the previous uh data collection points we wanted as identified as high priority um, without ignoring the fact that we also identified other ones. Uh, the second point I heard you say was the issue of whether or not we wanted to discuss further or explore uh, the idea of a privately funded data entity. If that's what I understood what Curtis was mm. saying, something alternatively funded some alternative funding to the government funding. And I think that um, 
I, I'm at this position, at this point, loath to go down that route only because that just to me opens up a whole nother can of worms of accountability and, and questions of protection of this data that I, I don't know where to begin. Um, I certainly don't have a model that I can turn to and maybe others have some, uh, somewhere for us to look where some private entity did a great job taking that kind of level and amount of data and making sure that the people whose data is being covered or that their privacy protections weren't sure of those assured. And I just don't know. But at this point, I would agree that this is thinking of this as a government entity, uh, whether it's a new entity or whether we identify a place within a current department of agency. Okay. Thank you. Evan. Um, so, so I, I definitely agree with Rebecca about the, the private entity bit. I have some hesit hesitancy surrounding that. Um, you know, I, I also agree with the both of you that to the degree that we can rely on the previous report to answer some of these questions, I think that's a great idea. And Eitan, I am, uh, you know, I tend to be conservative with these assignments as well, especially when we get a tight deadline. And so from my perspective, if we can, if we can answer these five questions from a high level perspective or a general perspective, um, that would be a good thing. It also has the advantage of allowing the Bureau some flexibility in how it finishes standing up the organization and it gives it a little bit more ownership and possibly opportunity. Well, I don't think they're going to need buy in. I think they'll be all over this, but you know, there are some advantages to that as well. And so looking at the five questions and having reviewed the December report again, it in my mind, it looks like the December report did a pretty decent job of answering questions two and three. I think that question one, there's probably still some things that we need to discuss. But my guess is at a minimum, folks would be on board with having some type of statement of independence in the enabling legislation, similar to the statement that appears in Susanna's enabling legislation. I know that she's technically part of the executive branch, but there is some nice language there about independence that I think is good. Um, if it ends up being part of the executive branch. Um, and so it seems to me like questions four and five are the ones that might be the most difficult to answer. Mm -hmm. um, and just being honest are probably the ones that I'm least qualified to help answer. But, you know, maybe those are the ones that whoever ends up staffing the bureau will will be able to help flush out if we if they're given enough flexibility by the legislature to do so. Right. Thank you. But yeah, no, I would, Rebecca, just so, and, and just as you both, I, I was not saying I supported what Curtis was saying. I was saying I thought it was outside the bounds of what we can do. Um, Witchy. Yeah, um, so just going along the lines of what we're talking about here, um, I had a chance to read through the December report and through the act. Um, 65 language. Um, I do agree that some stuff is already starting to be answered through that December report. Um, where I really struggle though is that there's no there's no exact why are we doing this. There's like a general why of like oh you know trying to find disparities like that's great and all, but like, you know, pick among the many, right? So I, I think what's missing here is that we don't know what the Bureau is doing. We don't know what the charges are. And, and then without knowing what the charges are and like, what is it that they're gonna investigate? What program is it that they're gonna improve, et cetera, which is sort of the questions that come from the toolkit. Um, I think without that, we can't necessarily answer what data is missing or how we're going to use the data or how that data needs to have, like what kind of compliance that data needs to have. So I think if anything, when we talk about scope and we're answering that number three, I think, right, that's number three. Yeah, we should really like, I think the general scope is really set there. Like we don't need new language that's already there, but we need to figure out what is, what is the first five years of that BRO? 
what are they supposed to be doing? And I think once we answer that, we can answer the uh, we can answer a lot of the other questions. OK, thank you. I, if I, if, if yeah, I, can, I, I think that I think that's a really good point that which he just raised, because when I went back and I read the report, it had a lot of information that the bureau is that we would like the bureau to collect. Um, and I know that in from a very general perspective, the idea is to identify where racial disparities in the criminal justice system might be present and what the causes of those might be. But it was not entirely clear to me how the Bureau was going to use the data that we wanted them to collect to answer some of those specific questions, like how that how, and, and, and I assume that was just me not understanding how to do that level of data analysis because I'm not a, a researcher. But I, I think maybe that is I think that point is maybe covered in in what which he was trying to say. And so I, I appreciate that point. OK. Monica. Yeah, sort of building off of that when I was, you know, looking at the um, AISP document and thinking about mission and, and you know, what, what, we, what the Bureau would do, one of the things that sort of came up for me, similar to what Evan was saying is, well, is the ultimate goal to recommend policy change, to enact policy change, to really, you know, dive into an area and really understand much more in depth than we already do what might be causing a particular disparity and then work to address that. I think that gets to some of the conversation we've, we've been having, but it's not, it's not as clearly outlined in any of the documents. Really, the Bureau is just supposed to collect and analyze data, but the purpose is the ultimate well, end goal isn't, isn't stated as clearly. I think we all think we know what it is, but it isn't stated as clearly. Okay. I mean, I was sort of working on the assumption that it's what we've been doing since 2017, just amplified. Yeah, I am too. But the Act 64 doesn't make that same connection. Because it says the legislative charge of the Bureau would be to collect and analyze data related to systemic racial bias and disparities. Mm -hmm. That's what that bureau does. So if we were going to write a mission, we would certainly want to be like, to what end are we collecting? Or is that bureau collecting and analyzing that data? This is Rebecca. I just wanted to weigh in. I, I love what I'm hearing from Evan and Witchy and Monica. Um, it's certainly something when I was reviewing AISP, but but also specifically some of the spin-off states that have been trying to apply some of the guide guidance that AISP has set out. Specifically, I'm thinking about Iowa, and 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 where where there is sort of this overall mandate that we've been working on in the report, right? Which is fundamentally trying to understand, dismantle white supremacy and these systems, right? But when where I think I'm hearing folks who I certainly would support, I think that this could be critical work that our subcommittee does in these next few weeks, is identifying a set number of guiding principles and that that we would want to be the structure within which whether we follow that suggestion I threw out there last week, the governing body overseeing and, and, and directing the executive director and staff. Again, that's just a model to be able to anchor this, but that that could be the principles we identify as the overarching critical principles create the, the finite framework so that folks don't stray outside, where we can keep the use of this data to be, in a way, both useful but not overly broad and potentially used as a weapon against people's data. So I would support that. And in fact, perhaps if we agree on sort of that this is where we want to go, that our homework is to sort of start identifying what these would be from our respective um, 
interest areas where we come at this from the panel, but specifically, again, applying the AISP racial center piece to make sure that community members get some input on this um, and, and, and people with lived experiences, all of that. My question, given that, there, well, I have a couple questions. Following on what Witchy pointed out and Evan supported, um, how do we, given that those tables make very clear that that those data are in some cases just not there, how do we, how does that impact the scope of the Bureau's mission? And uh, hold on, I'm looking back and forth between things. Um, and I guess my other question would be to Robin, very broadly, how do you see all of this just impacting, I, I mean, this meaning the uneven presence of the data impacting the scope of the work of the Bureau. But you don't have to answer that directly because David has his hand up. Okay. David, okay. I think hey, you're, you hear me? Dude, you're like in an alternate dimension. I think you've frozen. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, we really don't teach you what to do in these situations, you know? I, I've seen some people have luck turning off their, their video and sometimes oh, their audio they helps just, a little bit. Yeah, sometimes he just needs to call, call in on his phone like some of the other people are doing. Depends he's, on where he is. He looks like he's somewhere where maybe he's... he's somewhere interesting, but... Mm -hmm. Monica, why don't you have your hand up? So go ahead. I do have my I do have my hand up. Um, and so, you know, one of the one of the struggles that I have, um, and one of the things that I I think I hear other people struggling with is sometimes going back and forth between focusing in on the data, the data, the data, and what about the data, um, and this where is this available, and how is it going to go back and forth, and um, structural stuff around the bureau. And the way I was thinking about it was that the, the Bureau really, in my mind, is this place where, you know, the ability to create or promote best practice in terms of collecting and sharing and analyzing data it exists, right? So we know we're going to have to start small and grow, but we want to be thinking about it as the place where that work can actually begin to happen and there's like you where the data governance starts to be developed and where the system starts to be developed personally i don't think it's helpful to think about right now the individual pieces of data per se um, and so i just wanted to put it out there because that helps me think about these things in a different way um, and it may not be what everybody else thinks but Thought I'd share that. Thank you. Um, Robin, could you jump in now, given that yeah. I had sort of invoked you? <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> the Witch of Salem. Um, let's ah. see. <laughs> That's my hometown. So um, I guess a few thoughts. So I'm still, you know, it's funny, is we're, we're going back and forth, I'm going back and forth in my mind between the document y'all wrote last year, Rebecca's. Um, uh, Venn, Venn diagram of sorts from last session, last, last week, and what I'm hearing now. And so last, last week, Rebecca presented the, the circles of um, the, the Bureau, and then the analysis was done outside of the Bureau. And so I'm still working under that framework because I think um, that works well and also still gets to the idea of increasing um, non-institutionalized research partners, right, so that, that more people can have access to research data and research dollars. Um, that said, um, 
if, if so if you look at it that way then i think then what's then the goal of the bureau is more along the lines of what monica's saying and maybe the bureau does more governmental things like put up the dashboards like the department of health is doing for us now um and builds those sort of you know um Th those sorts of, of platforms um, for good government and transparent government, and then the data, they also prepare the data sets anonymously, um, you know, stripped of identity, so that other research, so that researchers can, you know, there are experts who, in corrections um, at Norwich, for example, uh, who, you know, would love to look at this data, or, you know, people from other institutions, or, you know, like I said before, um, you know, independent scholars. So, um, I do want to put a like just a, a, an asterisk. I know that people worked really hard on that list. I think data lists are um, not always the best because some of that list also comes with a cost that we're not going to be able to, add, you know, we're not going to know what that cost is for you to write the bill. So you may want to broaden, for example, to take Aton's example, uh, the ethnicity categories, which is an awesome idea. Uh, as, as I understand, DOC, you guys are already doing that. Well, what's it going to cost for DPS to pay their vendor to increase that level, right, to increase those levels? And what is the, um, what is the process? So their old system, for example, Spillman, um, if you wanted a change, if a state wanted a change, for example, to, right, so when we went to X on the, um, on the licenses uh, for gender, you know, for non-binary, um, that went into this national orders of tickets and not enough states really wanted it. So it kind of got, you know, filtered down the, the punch list for the programmers of their national, you know, database to add that, right? So it's not just as simple as ordering an agency to add something. There's this whole process in which you can probably explain it a lot better on how that's going to happen. Um, I like the idea because you guys are more community based than anything else in state government of research questions being asked by you and then working in conjunction with the Bureau to identify what data already exists to answer those questions. So start with the question and not with the data list. And the question will help you decide the data list. And as you answer those questions, because um, it'll be horrible if the first question you ask isn't answerable in the, those prioritized data lists, right? Um, so starting with the question and then building the data, since you guys have the more community um, input ideas, that the Bureau will then help, you know, collect from the agencies that are actually collecting the data so that you can then answer the questions. Does that make sense? It does. Can I, uh, Rob, so let me, and I'm not, it sounds very grand, like I'm just trying to jam something up here and I'm not. So in other words, put those lists aside and kind of concentrate on the notion of really letting the community figure out what questions it wants to ask. Well, I mean, that's certainly, I think, what I got out of the toolkit in a lot of ways. Um, that, that gets to the data governance piece. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, that we still have to kind of sort out. But let's say the community comes back and says, we really do want to know, are communities of color over-policed in our state? Great. So what do we need to answer that question? Well, we'll need the shape files of the um, precincts that the departments have and their patrol hours and what are they, you know. So there's a lot of data that we would need to answer that question. None of that's mm -hmm. in your list. Right. <laughs> so, um, but if, right. So if that's the burning question that people really want answered, then start with, mm -hmm. with what people want and build the list from there and, ha and have that be the charge. And then eventually you'll get all these data sets that can sure. be, you know, tracked and intertwined. Um, so you'll get where you want to go, but you'll start with the voice of the people first. Got it. Thank you. Yep. David, go. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Robin. I cut you off. I didn't realize that. Forgive no, me. No, I'm done. That was it. Oh, Okay. David, since you seem to be unfrozen now, and we've been you, here, you are. Go ahead. How how is this? Can you hear me, Aton? Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, let's try this. Connection obviously is is uh, spotty tonight. Um, a couple thoughts just on the on this conversation. You know, I think um, 
as we conceived of this, the the bureau is going to be a spotlight and not a compass. In other words, it's going to I think our idea for it originally had been that we're going to um, not prescribe solutions. The bureau is not there to prescribe solutions. It is there to understand the problem. Uh, and the problem is this body had already conceived of it, or, or I guess the thing that this body wanted to know when we started talking about this stuff was where in our criminal and juvenile justice systems are there unequal outcomes on the basis of race, and which is a very big question, of course, but that is what we wanted to know the answer to. And so we developed those lists um, last year in that report. And of course, they're enormous because to learn the answer to that question, there's a lot of data that needs to be gathered. There's a lot of points where that could be happening. Um, and then we narrowed it down to those prioritized ones because I think we made the decision, the, the, the subcommittee with the input of, of panelists made the decision that the sort of like early, we wanted to, re, the things that were most immediately pressing were the first part of how do people get into this system? Like, how is that happening? Where are the inequalities happening on the intake side of things? And so, and I, I don't know if I say all that just to say that I, I do actually think that the questions have been asked and that the, the sort of organizing uh, question has been asked already. It's a very big one. Uh, and it's not one that is actually designed to produce solutions. It is simply designed to produce um, an understanding of where the problems are. And then it will ultimately become the mission of all the various entities in state government to try to figure out what those solutions are. Um, I don't know if that was helpful at all, but just trying to like restate some of what our discussion had been as I recalled it, because I do actually think we had been working off of um, some a fundamental question and uh, our idea around this had been actually had been responsive to that fundamental question about where are there unequal outcomes on the basis of race and then the understanding being that with that information we will design we will hopefully be able to figure out solutions but that won't really be the bureau's job that's a subsequent job for legislators groups like this perhaps this group itself um prosecutors defense attorneys everybody okay uh, Evan, can you hold off a moment? Because Witchy's had his hand up for like a bit longer. Witchy, go ahead. Um, so I there's a lot of thoughts in my brain, so I'm sorry if I just like end up vomiting them. Um, but um, so I think uh, I think there's a disconnect for me between what David was saying and what Monica was saying, because like on one end it's sort of like Okay, so the so they're just gonna give us the dashboards. We'll figure out. We'll figure. We'll sort of like figure a lot of it, uh, the specifics out later. And David's saying, well, the specific thing that we're trying to do is where are the disparities? Uh, which I also feel generally, it's like a very that's a very large scope. You know, given that you have to prioritize that data list. Um, I I agree with Robin that um, it's important to like know what it is that we're like asking and who's asking it. And when I look at the Act 65, um, was it the Act 65? One of them says that the, the whole point is to have a public dashboard for public transparency. Um, you know, and even if that means being able to export for academic uh, purposes or for institutions, um, I just think like, you know, I, I, I think we sort of need to set a path. We, we need to set the Bureau on a path that can be develop research questions with communities and figure out what data we need for that. It can be research this this like smaller scope to figure out if there's a disparity and why the disparity exists. Um, but I don't necessarily feel like it should be like, here, Bureau, figure it out, right? Like, I think we need to like <laughs> set it on a, uh, on a path um, with well, obviously with with the community being the guiding force, um, which I agree with Robin is what the toolkit is saying. OK. Evan. Thanks. So 
I'm a little worried that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start just endorsing what other people have to say rather than offering too many uh, original thoughts. But I, I just wanted to follow up on what Robin was saying, and, and and I think that you know I agree with what she was recommended recommending, and um, going back to what the mission might be, thinking about that specific question, um, you know, maybe as part of the mission statement, we could we could have that the bureau, one of the Bureau's responsibilities is to help identify what additional data uh, might be needed to, they might need to collect. Cause you know, I wouldn't wanna make it so restrictive that they don't have the authority to collect the data that they need, but I also wouldn't wanna make it so prescriptive that they start collecting data that they don't think is helpful in answering any of these questions. Um, and another thing that could be helpful with the mission statement is you know, providing assistance to the owners of that data who might not have the expertise to collect it and report it out on their own. And one of the things that might help the Bureau do this is if they're enable if in their enabling legislation, they're specifically given some rulemaking authority to answer t these types of questions, because that rulemaking process, although it can be difficult with members of the public to engage in, it's at least a a venue for some engagement. Uh, it's not perfect, but it it could help. Okay. I just Karen. Want to say, I hate rulemaking, oh. but I get your point. <laughs> that's just my dis that's just my dislike for rulemaking. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tom, hey, hey, Tom, maybe we'll put you on that committee. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Rebecca. Did you were you talking? I was just saying, just put me in the queue for, for with my hand up. Whenever okay. I Karen goes, Karen wants to speak and then you. So I was just going to say that I think, I actually think both David and Robin are right. Um, and, and this can be, you know, when you think about creating a plan, um, some kind of strategic plan for an organization or, or a program or process to move forward. Um, you can have an overarching goal. And I think that's what that's what was set out in that original report was there's this overarching goal of identifying disparities in the criminal and juvenile justice system. But part of the challenge with that is how much data do you have to collect and where do you start? So it's really important to start taking a look at how do you chunk that out? And Robin and I have talked about this. Well, since I started with CRG and actually I did this work for the judiciary for 10 years is how do you chunk it out? So how do you look at the disparities in probation? How do you look at the disparities in sentencing? How do you look at the disparities in law enforcement responses to whites and people of color? How do you look at the disparities in pretrial services and alternative programs? What data do you need to find the disparities in how prosecution does their work? So there's all these places where you have questions about where the disparities live. And we all know the criminal justice system is a continuum. And that's constantly where I go back to is, you know, some of you have heard me talk about the sequential intercept model. And we talk about that in terms of how do you intercept people and move them out of the system or give them a better outcome. And it's the same kind of process with looking at the data is the data you need for looking at law enforcement are going to be different data than you look at for probation and parole. So there's, you know, all the I look through a lot of the um, information on AISP and the the resources that they um, talk about on their site. A lot of them were the same thing, and it all kind of pointed back to the toolkit. And the toolkit specifically said start small. So what's the most pressing issue right now for this group to deal with, and what data do we need to answer that question? You know, we can, Robin and I can go through that data again and break it down and say, you know, here's what's available and, and make a column and say, here's what's available. Here's what could be available if we did certain things and here's what's absolutely not available. We can break that down. We can tell you where to find the data, but it doesn't mean it's going to answer your question. So what are the most pressing questions or what's the most, may even be easier to start with, what's the most pressing part of the criminal justice system 
or breaking it down by the sequential intercept model. So we're looking at law enforcement, pretrial services, sentencing, and probation and community services, you know, maybe or alternatives to the criminal justice system. That may be a way to guide what we do as a framework and then talk about the data under each one of those parts of the criminal justice system, because each part is going to need different data. Okay. I'm done. That's Thank always you. my, that's my soapbox. <laughs> Rebecca. Hi, so I apologize. I'm like, less than a minute, I'm going to mute myself. because You guys are all going to hear my GPS. What are we hearing? All right, never mind. My GPS keeps keeps jumping in. So oh, okay. Right, but here I am. All right, so, um, but if I go mute, that's what I'm just doing. So I'm saving you all. So, what I I'm back. So what I'm hearing, and I I and I agree because this is my sense. And, and what I'm hearing. Sorry about that. What I'm hearing from Robin and others is that even looking at our priority identified data we wanted to collect, that that was still too large of, of an undertaking to start off with. And, um, and hearing what everyone is saying, and I want to make sure my, my thoughts on this, I, I'm more clear on it, I see our role as sort of Twofold, and we, we are collapsing a little bit what I see as two parts, which is what is the initial data that we want this entity to collect, right? What is our top priority if our current priority list is too big, or alternatively, does we even answer the questions that we really want to ask, right? And then there's is going to how how will the governing body decide what next set of data to collect and do we want to set up a structure some guiding principles efficiency right to guide the future decision points and how who set up who's on this body how it's set up how they come up with the questions to be answered that that kind of thing so I, I, I wonder if we can think about it that way, or whether or not we want to discuss how we want to approach this and what we want to give the legislature. Okay. David. Um, I'm not sure, well, I'm not sure if I'm adding a whole lot here, but I'll just keep it brief because of that. I think you know, one thing I wanted to clarify was that I, I, I'm certainly not wedded to the specific list that we had. And, and you, listening to this con in that report and, and from last December and listening to this conversation has sort of helped me clarify my thinking on that, too. Um, I do think that that report sort of pointed us to the broad mission, which I'd already talked a little bit about, which other people have referenced as well. Like, what are what's the big picture we're trying to do? But I, I also think and I think what I'm hearing is that it makes sense to allow this bureau is going to have its own governing body it's going to have its own sort of let's let that governing body um i'm not saying this has to be the way it's done but the you know let's let that governing body make some of these prioritization decisions too and i think to Re rebecca's point the the mission and perhaps you know what we put in this report can provide some guidance about how those decisions are made perhaps but that in order to have more directed or more effective data gathering along the lines of what which is talking about and, and which is infinitely more expert than I am on, on how to formulate these types of questions. But it may be the case that it works better for us to say, here's the big scope. Um, these are this is how we envision some of this working, some of the steps that it could take. And now you, the entity, uh, it is now your responsibility to formulate some of these perhaps tighter questions uh, and prioritize a little bit. Our report from December uh, almost behaved as though that the Bureau already existed. We said, all right, if we could get the data, this is the data we want first. 
Um, and maybe that's a directive we give in, in whatever in this report. Maybe it's not. You know, I, that'll be up to the group. Um, but that was sort of like I think now, uh, you know, we've got the broad idea. And I think some of these like clarifying pieces that people are bringing up around. We need to allow this bureau to be able to do its work with um, slightly more slightly more directed questions. And that should be within their purview to do. So all that is just to say I. I agree with what folks are saying around being wedded to specific data lists is probably not the way to establish this and asking instead the big questions and then allowing the Bureau itself some discretion within those big questions is probably a more effective way to have a workable operation moving forward. Okay. Monica and then Witchy. There's so much going on. I'm trying to figure out if what I wanted to say is like at added value or just more like, you know, talk talking. That's what I'm oh, trying just to say. <laughs> so and just because I was trying to figure out, like, you know, I was sketching things out and writing things. And I and like on my piece of paper here, I've got like this broad sort of mission statement that really is, you know, is and I'm not wedded to this at all, but the idea I was thinking of the Bureau is that it its real job was, you know, to create or promote or develop, you know, a structure um, that allows access to data and information that's centered around racial equity, right? And that Bureau for that purpose. And that in order to do that, there's a bunch of different things that they need to do. And one of the things that that Bureau needs to do is you know, build relationships with communities, develop a data integration governance structure with the right parties that are in, um, involved in that, follow best practices for sharing and integrating data analysis and reporting. And then I've just heard some new ideas, develop a strategic plan, review and build on the RDAP Act 148 report, provide assistance to organizations in terms of, you know, best practices for data collection. That's the way I think of it when I think about the scope and the mission of an organization. Um, and so that's just where I had been going in my brain, if that's a helpful structure for people. Well, it, Witchy, can I interrupt for a moment here? Thanks. Monica, I, that's intriguing because I was doing the same thing. And what I was thinking of doing um, as an action item for myself was sketching out a mission and submitting it to everybody. I can't believe I'm saying I'll send you this. what I wrote submitting down. <laughs> that would, I guess I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to use Monica's notes and some of my, are the thoughts that I've gathered from everything that's been said so far and sketch out a mission statement that I'll then disseminate to everyone. And I am thinking this partly because one truth that I don't think any of you will be able to dissuade me from after chairing this panel is that if there is a written document in front of people that they can rip apart and reform, it goes a hell of a lot better than coming from, you know, some genesis moment of let there be light. That never works. So I, Monica, if you would... If you would forward that to me, what in whatever form? Oh, I don't know. I'm if not going to take it. No, I'm not going to take a picture of my paper. I'll type it and send it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I suddenly realized as I was saying that I really didn't mean it, and that That's I was like, fine. "How am I going to backtrack on that?" Um, but yeah, and I'll like write something up that's taking everybody's. I mean, Robin and ev I mean everybody who's been witchy, Evan, y'all, y'all, and. Monica and put it together best I can and I'll probably leave somebody out so get mad and edit it you know witchy your turn yeah um I agree that seeing things in writing and then taking it apart and putting it back together is gonna make things go faster uh I really like that list, Monica, that you just gave. Um, and I think that aligns really well, I think, with what we're all trying to say, which is sort of like have this bureau 
answer the questions and then that question be formed by a committee of stakeholders um, and that committee of stakeholders be it however we want to define it, um, keeping in mind that we talked a lot about community. Um, and I think I think that's kind of what we should approach this with, that the, you know, this bureau is just in charge of creating the data uh, and the data sets and the dashboards. Um, and then we have the committee actually asked questions. Um, we could broaden it so in, in addition to the committee, there are other agencies that can ask questions, but you really want some kind of reporting process. So think, so, you know, priorities don't get mixed and like who answers to whom. Um, right, so uh, I think though to keep in mind that the data infrastructure, that this bureau is not gonna be able to develop an infrastructure that makes sense without the question being asked first. So this committee needs to really be, this committee of stakeholders needs to be really formed at the same time in order to ask these folks, hey, design a system that answers these questions and that also lays a foundation to scale from there. Which sounds like something that needs to go into the draft legislation when we get to that point, I think. Evan, would you agree? David, would you agree? What which he just pointed out? Uh, I th I think I think I would. Yeah, the, if we, you know, s setting a baseline or some guiding principles, and then allowing the entity itself to expand upon them is not a model that is. I mean, that's a pretty common model for enabling legislation for various state agencies that are delegated authority by the legislature. So. Uh, is, is probably a more a, a better way of articulating the sort of rulemaking concept that I was trying to as 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 cumbersome as rulemaking can be, Monica. Uh, you know, um, I think that that might be one avenue. You know, obviously that it could use the Administrative Procedures Act. Also has you know provisions for coming out with guidance documents and procedures that don't rise to the level of rules, and hopefully this entity would be able to take advantage of all of those tools. Witchy, can I ask you, this is so unfair. I want you to remember everything you just said and I want you to write it down and send it to me. <laughs> or as much of that as you can, because it was really eloquent. It was sure, really can eloquent. I, can I include some pictures? Some just like drawings? Sure. I what, okay. Dude, whatever gets you through. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Um, pictures would be great. Uh, whatever gets, but you, what you were saying about the sequencing, the sequencing of the question formation and the question asking and the question answering was really powerful. And that would help if I looked at that when I look at what um, Monica also was thinking up too. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you, I mean, I know I'm giving people like jobs. I'm sorry, but it's kind of my job. And, um, but that would, but it really was wonderful. And that's why I'm just like, please, there's a little bit of a bag there. So, you know, anyway, um, Rebecca, you've always got a really good sense for when we're missing something and going to step in it. Are you having any, like, is your spider sense tingling at this moment? No, but I actually think that what everyone is suggesting is, is very similar. Um, what, I, what I what I heard uh, Wiki say was, uh, Wiki, I'm sorry, <laughs> is, is, uh, is critical to have the formation of this committee of stakeholders identified as community members or government, whether you want to and have that form right away to be able to identify that that group can identify the question that needs to be answered, right? What, yeah. what I just, in terms of how we're thinking about it, I call that the governance board, but absolutely a committee, right? Um, I think the, the initial draft legislation we saw out of, out of this past session uh, that was proposed, it created that committee um, and maybe we start thinking of the entity uh, I am deliberately calling it an entity and not a bureau because I've expressed my 
like the bureau, the bureau before, but I'll keep doing it. So maybe we should start thinking about the entity um, as something bigger, including this committee and then the, uh, the folks who will be pulling all the data together and doing the dashboard and getting, getting all the data from all the government people. Um, and and Aton, I was just wanted to suggest that in the next few days, I'd like to um, think and look at some other state guiding um, principles for similar governing boards for data and see if I can uh, get some language and send them to you to add to that written product. For I, I, more is more. Thank you. It also occurs to me that we've gone, and I just wanted to put this out there in a bit under an hour, a long way to answering number three, what should be the scope of the Bureau's mission? And it seems to me, listening to everything that's gone on, that a lot of that is to figure out what questions are appropriate and how to ask them. Um, not that that would be the mission statement, but I'm just saying for us, it's already feeling like what we decided we were going to do last week is sort of falling into place to some degree. Um, I will, um, my sense is number two isn't really going to, I don't know where that's going to get asked or answered rather. I, I mean, I, that's going to be all y'all data people. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I didn't mean that dismissively. I meant it more like, y'all know what, you're like the rocket scientists and I'm the staffing. I don't know what's realistic. I just have no way of knowing that. Evan. Yeah, the, the, the only thing I was gonna add on that topic, and I'm not, I'm not saying Connecticut got it right or got it wrong, but, um, in the re in the report, my recollection is we identified that Connecticut needed three full time yes. folks, and so you know I, I I just go back to wondering how you know how much can we answer these in a in a very general way and you know identify like the baseline or the starting point for that perhaps based on what Connecticut has done. Um, perhaps based on what, you know, CRG, I'm sure they would have some thoughts about this, but, you know, establish it as a baseline. And then, um, you know, I'm sure the Bureau can, you know, will will develop its own sense as it starts to implement its mission for what its staffing needs are and, and, and make the appropriate sales pitch when the time comes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Witchy. Yeah, as far as staffing goes, um, again, it'll depend on the scope. But I think as a general starting frame, I would say um, minimum of three positions, but four main responsibilities. These responsibilities would be um, someone to an architect to design the, the infrastructure, an engineer to build it. Uh, an analyst to do the dashboarding and reporting and, uh, and project and someone to manage the project. Those are the four main responsibilities that I would see going into a project like this. Uh, wow. I can write that down. I'll send it in that email. You, dude, you I knew mean, where that was going, didn't you? Yeah. You I, knew, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm really, it, it, in about five minutes, I'm easy to figure out. Thanks. Um, uh, great. Do we want to go further on this now or do we want to wait, leave, this at this moment and um i'll like get to work i i don't know when uh i don't know when i'll do it as soon as i possibly can i'd like to say tomorrow um i'd like to say tomorrow uh i'll see how my day goes it may be a little later don't hold me to that um but i guess what i'm asking is do we want to hold this now and then go back to the conversation about um, the siting of the Bureau, of the entity, or what do people feel? Evan's nodding his head, like, sure. 
okay, let's do that. <laughs> Seeing no objection, um, the only thing I would say to start, and this is coming from last week, was um, I think it's important that we note that the in the whole idea of the the independence was really we like independence as a notion, but structurally independence is really difficult for an organization like this. And that's all I want to put out in as a preamble to that discussion. I, I, I agree with you, Eitan, and, and, and that's why I tried to sort of say, you know, hopefully there'd be some consensus that as a baseline, if it's housed in another entity or another branch of government, um, you know, there at least be some statement in, its, in the enabling legislation that recognizes the importance of independence, similar to um, the, the, you know, Susanna's enabling legislation. Right. Um, but, you know, I think that if whether it's a standalone entity or it's housed someplace else, I think is going to be influenced, at least in part, by practical and fiscal considerations. And so, you know, I I think it would and, and I don't I don't know that we will be able to fully answer that, which is maybe why we answer this in a more general way. But I would. Once we once we figure out what the mission is going to be, I would want to know, are there any other entities in state government that have similar missions um, in terms of or, or perform similar tasks in terms of data collection, even if the subject matter is is different? Or is there an entity that is well situated to help facilitate the transfer of the necessary data? Um, to, to the Bureau, which, you know, might in part answer question number five. Um, so those, those are my initial thoughts. Okay. Um, hey, Tom, may I have a yes, Robin. Are you sure? I'm just saying, like, I'm raising my hand, so. No, no, you're, okay. there, nobody else has their hand up but you. No, oh, thank you. So, um, words of caution as you guys are thinking about where this entity, I'll use Rebecca's words, uh, live. Um, let's take, for example, the Sentencing Commission. We used to have a paid executive director. He's now Judge Kanan. Um, first budget rescission, his salary went, and so did he. Um, you know, having we, the, the State Statistical Analysis Center, when we were the Vermont Center for Justice Research, we used to have our own line item in the budget that got cut and cut and cut um, until DPS brought us in under their budget um, to kind of continue to fund because the legislature was going to keep cutting that budget over the years. So keep in mind who is going to protect the entity um, from, those, from that first budget rescission that's going to happen. Um, and, and so who has the kind of ability to advocate um, institutionally in some way. And I don't know what that looks like, and it could be something like the Board of Directors for CCDS, who is a separate entity, um, but get funding from the state along from other entities. So my fear is that you set up this thing in the first budget rescission, that's the first thing that goes. Um, and that can happen, because I've seen it happen over time. So that's my only word of caution. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Robin. Susanna. Hey, I just wanted to um, I wanted to say that I think we should if, if we want a greater degree of independence, we should probably not model it after the enabling statute that created my role because that's not in there. Um, it was in the original draft that advocates brought forward and through all of the negotiations and compromises that ended up getting largely cut advocates are still um, calling for it. There was a bill on the wall last session to make some modifications, but I'm I'm not, it's not clear to me that those bills will get hearings. Um, I just put in the chat the enable the, the the code where it appears. Thank you. Uh, oh God, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, I was following Evan. 
that about needing that we need to have a mission draft of a mission statement before we even go back to one because it'll tell us what that entity needs to have for qualities in order to make the mission possible for the entity. Rebecca, I'm finding myself fascinated by what you might be thinking as you're driving down the interstate. Uh, thanks, Shaitan. You just saved me from trying to awkwardly jump in. I hate this, not seeing you guys. Um, <laughs> taking Robin's point to heart, taking uh, Switchy's point, which is about making sure there's enough infrastructure there. Also, hearing the echo of Secretary of State Jim Condos, um, and of course, Evan, um, underlining what we as a panel were unanimous about last year, which was the need to have this be independent. And Susanna, I appreciate you pointing out uh, and correcting us in terms of looking at the language that enables your directive is not the model. Uh, and necessarily, we want that sense of independence. I'm back to I'm back to increasingly resting on those recommended entities within the executive. Uh, and, and again, full disclosure for the new members on the panel, um, the Defender General's uh, Office recommended Secretary of State, uh, Auditor's Office, and Human Rights Commission, one, two, three, in descending order. And I'm back to thinking those are the three places. Again, the, it's established, it'll provide some protection, not Department of Public Safety, so there's an independent side to it, right? Uh, and um, yeah, and, and the infrastructure problem with certainly the comparison between Secretary of State uh, versus the auditor's office, absolutely different sizes and uh, scale, but again, that's a matter of increasing a line. Uh, I, I know not simple politics, but <laughs> it could theoretically be built some with it. So I, I, I wonder if, if I wonder if others Hello? would agree. Oh. I, I wonder if others would agree with that or have new ideas. And you want to see? I worry, Evan, that if we stay vague, that we lose the ability to underline the independent nature and centrality that we want to make sure this, this, this data entity has. Rebecca, I think you just made a really big point and I didn't get it. Can, I think it was because of the technology. Um, can you just no, repeat my, your my, last? Like, my, my point was that last last year uh, we came up with that list. <laughs> yes. That was a list of entities that Pepper collected from all of us, and uh, I would I would put forth what the Defender General's Office suggested on that list, which was um, Secretary of State's Office, Auditor's Office, Human Rights Commission. One, two, three, okay. is sending order. I wonder if the others here on this call, listening to Robin's point um, and Evans in terms of how much detail we want to provide and the importance for independence, whether we should go and make a specific recommendation. And if so, whether there's some consensus even with a small group here. Okay. And conveniently, Evan has his hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Evan. Yeah, yeah, and I and I I don't I don't recall hearing about those three suggestions, Rebecca. I I think they're you know potentially good homes. The one that I think is the most intriguing is the auditor's office. Um, you know, I'd be interested in I'd be interested in knowing if anyone from that office uh, thought that this thought you know w was supportive of that idea. Um, you know, it's also I really appreciate Susanna's 
comment about her the deficiencies in her own enabling legislation because the the language and, and for circulating it as well that because the language that I had been thinking of was uh, the sentence that says the administration shall not prevent or prohibit the executive director from initiating carrying out or completing the duties of the executive director as set forth in this title and so if that's if that's deficient in some in some way i mean on its face it looks like pretty a pretty clear message um but if that's deficient in some way then i think that we should definitely um keep keep those deficiencies in mind in case the legislature also thinks that that might be good language to include uh you know just just so we have a better sense for what the problems are why it's insufficient and then we can you know be prepared to answer those questions if if we get them in the endless hearings that we'll have yes david uh two things one uh, um i would Aton, I, I agree with you that perhaps before making a final decision on this how we approach this it might make sense to have uh, a mission in place that or or at least a little bit more fleshed out. That being said, I do think that we all have a sort of general understanding of what we're hoping to this this body will accomplish here. Um, and, and with respect to the placement, I, I fall into the camp of being pretty agnostic as to where specifically it ends up. I think it is a reality of politics that in any position, any elected position may ultimately be occupied by somebody who is hostile to the mission of this bureau, whether that's the secretary of state, whether that's the auditor, whether that's the governor, we don't know who's going to win those offices down the road someday. And it may be any one of those could be occupied by somebody who'd rather not see this bureau carry out its its efforts. Um, I think that's just a reality. So I would agree that the key here is to have legislation that um, to the maximal extent possible really protects the bureau from uh, interf interference from a elected official. Ultimately, this is going to be under somebody's auspices, right? That, that's just how government works, whether it's five layers below the governor or immediately under the auditor. Uh, some elected official is going to have a purview over this, and it needs to be protected. The legislation needs to be written in a way that gives a, a high degree of protection to the mission. Um, and I do think that that is achievable, um, and I think there are samples out there. So that's where I would really pr place the effort here uh, and place the emphasis here is how do you write legislation that protects the Bureau from a potentially hostile elected official, which, again, I have to emphasize could be any one of these offices. Um, and, and I don't have that you know, language at it at the forefront of my mind, but but things along the lines of what Evan was saying and along and I would um, I appreciate Susanna's um, words as well in terms of the history, which I hadn't been fully aware of. And, and I think it would be helpful to to look at those to look towards those uh, examples uh, uh, that as things that we could draw from. Robin's point about the rescission, I think, is very well taken and ultimately shows that the legislature is going to be the itself is going to be the final protector of this. Uh, and, and we will have to those of us who care about these issues will have to continue to advocate in the future as tough budgetary decisions come come into play. OK. Yeah, I have to admit personally, I mean, we've been talking about where this goes for the better part of a year and, you know, to protect it. And I'm, I'm, I mean, people are still arguing Roe v. Wade on the federal level. I mean, I, I just am sort of like, there's a zero sum game here where you do the best you can do and that's about it. Um, you just can't take in every exigency in the future. And I, I which depresses me because I'm a control freak. Um, any other comments on this? Because what I was hearing was, and I don't remember who said it at the moment, but that it would be helpful to talk about the mission and then go back to this. Who said that? I didn't mean that as accusatorily as that came out. I thought you said it, Aton, but I, I could- Did I say I it? Oh. Dear God, now I'm like, got other problems. Um, 
if everyone agrees with that, then it, I, I'm not trying to like get out of anything, but it looks like this is a natural stopping point for tonight. And that I've got some work to do after um, Monica and Witchy submit some sentences to me. And then I need to get those into some, you know, I'm not even talking about pages, obviously. I'm talking about a few paragraphs here, um, but good paragraphs and, and get them back out to everybody. So there's something to work on next Monday. I think that makes a lot of sense. And and just as a heads up, I unfortunately am not going to be able to attend next Monday. But Aton, if if you send that out, I, I'll do my absolute best to review it and get Great. you any comments this week to the degree that th that would be helpful. I and I'm going to do everything I can to write it and get it out to you. Adam. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Do you have any thoughts on this? I. I you're just uncharacteristically quiet because you're driving. I feel a little lost. Oh my God, she really isn't there. I always count on her for picking out the really, like the thing I miss. Rebecca, please. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well, all right. Uh, does anyone have anything else then that they would like to raise tonight before three of us write some stuff down and one of us really writes some stuff down and gets it back out to you? Oh, Rebecca's trying to talk? Oh. Oh, she just left. Oh, I hope I didn't annoy her. Um, damn. Anyway, all right. If does anyone have anything else they'd like to raise? No. Yes. No. Then I'm going to close the meeting at 721. Thank you all, as always, for your wonderful thinking and uh we will go on next week and as i say i will do my best when i receive stuff to fashion something that we can you know really dig into and pull apart and edit all right great good night everybody thank you good night thank you Have a good night Bye, everybody bye